Alright guys, so after Android Studio is finished setting up and preparing your project, you're going to have something that looks like this. And if you have an error right now, then I know what error that you're getting, so I'm going to show you guys how to fix that in just a second. But for now, I just want to warn you guys, even though it looks kind of overwhelming, trust me, this is set up perfectly for making apps in, in about seven tutorials or something once we cover the entire interface this is going to feel just like home and all the stuff that feels overwhelming right now is uh, actually gonna you're probably gonna find it very useful but for now I'm gonna mention a couple of things that are gonna make your life a whole lot easier the first thing is if you ever want to access that SDK manager from here then what you do is you go up to this little thing it kinda looks like the little I think his name's Andy the Android. Looks like he's sitting in this bucket with a down arrow. But this is the Android SDK Manager. So click that. And again, you don't have to close out of your entire project to open up the SDK Manager anymore. And I actually want to show you guys one more package that um I forgot to tell you guys to install later on. I mean earlier. So if you open up the SDK Manager and you scroll all the way down, then make sure that you have this package installed right here it's the Intel x86 emulator accelerator and again I installed it already but it takes like two seconds to install but what this is is basically whenever we develop these sample apps what we're gonna do is we're gonna run those on pretty much emulators or they're pretty much like little virtual phones that we can use for testing and those are kind of slow so that package just helps speed up the entire process and um, makes it run a little bit smoother and faster. So if you guys wanted to know what that was, there you go. If you didn't, well, uh, you know, sorry for wasting your time. But that's how you get to the Android SDK Manager from here. Now another thing that I want to do is mention this. A lot of you guys probably have an error that popped up that says, okay, I can't find the Android SDK or I don't know where the Java JDK is. You got to help me out because Android Studio won't run um, how it's configured right now. So if Android Studio has a problem finding either of those things, then go to File and go to Project Structure. And then from here it says, okay, the Android SDK location is where? And actually if this, if you see like, I think if you get an error, it shows like some red text or something. But in order to navigate to it, if it's not set up correctly, just click these little three little dots on the right hand side and then you can say, okay, you obviously aren't looking in the right place. This is where I downloaded my Android SDK. And the same thing with a Java development kit or the JDK. Make sure that the directory ends with the JDK in your version number and make sure that the Android SDK ends with SDK. So again, if you um, downloaded it to a different um, directory than I did in the example, then you're going to have these errors. So that is where you fix them, depending on wherever you downloaded it. So mine is correct, so I'm just going to close out of that. And I probably should mention this as well. All right. So just so every um, user is looking at the same thing, I'm going to change the app theme right here because this typically changes from user to user. So make sure, I'll show you guys, if you click on app theme right here, then the theme is pretty much the overall look and feel of your app. So switch yours to material light and click OK. And as you can see, your interface changes a little bit. Again, this is just so everyone um, is looking at the same thing and you're not watching this tutorial and are like, OK, mine looks different than yours and that's weird. Now the last thing I want to mention before we actually run this is this. Right now whenever I'm teaching these tutorials, you see that we have minimal screen size and that's just because I wanted to make the window small enough where um, people with smaller monitors can see the videos clearly. Well, the problem with this is the screen, whenever we're developing this app, it looks kind of small. So in order to get rid of this phone body, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the settings and you see it says include device frame I'm gonna uncheck that so again if you ever like developing and looking at the phone itself maybe it gives you a better idea of what the application is gonna look like then do that however just to make sure that these tutorials are a little bit more clear I'm gonna get rid of that 
and then we're going to see the interface a little more clearly. So once we're ready to run our app and test everything out, this is what I want you to do. Go up to Tools and select Android AVD Manager. Now, if you don't want to go through all those steps, you can also click this little button right here. This is just a shortcut to the AVD Manager. And the AVD Manager stands for Android Virtual Device Manager. So this, let me make this a little bit more clear. All right. So this is where you manage all of your virtual devices. And again, a virtual device is just a little simulator, a little testing phone that you can make so you don't have to take an actual Android phone and plug it in your computer whenever you're developing apps and you want to test them out. So by default, whenever you download and install Android Studio, it comes with one virtual device. This is the Nexus 5. So that's what simulator phone comes built with it. But of course, if you ever want to make a new one, you just create virtual device by clicking that button down there. You can actually create, um, you know, little simulator TVs and whatnot. But I'll talk you guys through how to create a virtual device. I don't know. Maybe you want to create a same virtual device um, as the phone that you actually own. But for now, you can just use this one right here. Now the reason that I'm not going to use this one and the reason that I built another one called Bucky's phone is something that you don't have to worry about. It's actually because whenever I'm recording these tutorials and I'm running this little simulator, it takes up a lot of space and it doesn't really show that great on my, uh, like whenever I'm making tutorials. So that's why I made Bucky's phone. It's pretty much the same thing except um, I made it a lot smaller so it shows up better in my tutorials. But anyways what you want to do is you want to click this little green button right by Nexus 5 I'm gonna click mine called Bucky's phone and this is gonna launch as you can see right here the virtual device which is pretty much just a simulator of a phone now the first time you run this it's gonna take a long time to boot up because what it pretty much represents is you you're buying a brand new phone so it has to start it up for the very first time and the reason that this takes so long is if you think about it, what it's actually doing is it's building an entirely new operating system or an entirely new device within your computer. So it has to build a new phone with a new operating system that can run new apps. So that's why the entire build process in, you know, to get it up and running takes a little bit longer than you may like. So once your virtual device is up and running, and yours may look a little different than mine because I did run mine before but to you it may simulate opening a brand new phone so it's gonna be like welcome to Android you're gonna have to press OK whatever but anyways you just click OK a bunch of times and then you're gonna get to this screen right here so this is the unlock screen and of course if you are used to an iPhone or something the unlocking process is a little bit different than it is in an Android so just click and drag up and that's going to unlock your phone and as you can see it's just like a normal phone you can even browse the internet from here but what we are worried about is running our application so let's hop over back to Android Studio and I'm just gonna close out of this but what you want to do is you want to go up to this little button right here and whenever you hover over it it says run app so click that little green triangle and what this is going to do is it's going to build your app for you and it's actually going to give us one more option I believe yep right here so it says okay we're building your app where do you want to test it out so since we already have this emulator running right there make sure that your radio button is checked choose the running device and of course you're probably only going to have one running so you can just click okay so what this is going to do is it's going to build it and it's going to launch it in our little simulator phone. So it takes a little bit of time, but don't worry, um, that's normal. But eventually, as you can see, what happens is it finally launches. And that's actually pretty cool that you don't have to actually go click on app and open it or anything. It just launches right for you. Pretty sweet. So we see that our application it says, my application, hello world probably the coolest app ever invented you could probably put this on Google Play right now and make at least like 10 million dollars but of course what we want to do is actually jazz this up a little bit more 
before we put this bad boy for sale. So that is the process of how to build a very simple app and test everything out. Again, my guess is that since everyone's system is set up a little bit differently, if things don't run completely smoothly for you or if you get any bugs or errors, please go to my forum, post your questions, and there are a lot of people willing and actually wanting to answer your questions for you because whenever they answer someone's questions on the forum, they actually get these things called points. So um, you are encouraged to ask questions because they probably want questions to help you out with. But anyways, if you have any problems, that's what you do. Thank you guys for watching. In the next tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you guys something else that is definitely awesome. So I'll see you then.